acts just like a blown power valve. A blown power valve. As soon as you get it on primary, is it is fire. There you go. This week on Auto Resto Mod, Jeff and Cam tackle tuning your distributor. Be sure to like and subscribe for more great videos on classic car mods and restorations. National Parts Depot offers quality restoration parts for Mustang, Cougar, Camaro, Firebird, Chevelle, GTO, Chevy and Ford trucks, Bronco and Thunderbirds. For quality parts in stock and delivered fast from our four warehouses nationwide, nobody beats NPD's speed and service. For your free catalog, go online or call toll free. NPD, make your dream happen. You were wrong. Yes. <laughs> Why are we taking things apart that were once together? Because you were wrong. We were both wrong. <laughs> well, yeah, because I, I agreed with you. I thought the carburetor was the issue. The carburetor was not the issue. The accelerator pump was checkered, so I replaced the accelerator pump with one from National Parts Depot. Didn't fix it. No, the auto problem was still there. I mean, I, I mucked around with this thing for a while. This is not just a last 15 mm -hmm. minutes thing because it acts just exactly like a blown power valve. A blown power valve. And as it's soon not. as you get it on primaries, it misfires and carries on. Yeah, exactly. You take it off the idle circuit and then it just goes nuts. But I figured out what it is. It's a problem with the distributor, and it's something that we've had guys write in, oddly enough, and say in the last couple of weeks, hey, I'm having a problem with my distributor. So I figure if I'm having a problem with it, they're having a problem with it. People that aren't even talking to us yet are having a problem with that on their classic car. So what I want to do today is I want to get this thing worked out mm -hmm. so that guys can actually look at it, know what to do, how to get their set up, because I think that the problem actually comes in that the cans that are being sold... <laughs> the garbage. They're, well, I, don't think, I think it's just that they're not, they come in mm -hmm. set differently than they yeah. should be. They're set probably all the way sensitive. Or, yeah, they're all the way on advance, and at least this one is. I've gone mm -hmm. in and checked it already. This one's all the way on advance, so it's, a, it's not where it needs to be. Because when you put the timing line on there, you're like 8,000 degrees advance, which is probably... Oh, <laughs> all the timing. <laughs> all the timing. And all the world is in this 390. <laughs> so we're going to go through that today. We're going to make sure that the guys understand how to work the distributor and work on the distributor and then we'll set that aside and we'll do probably 37,000 other things while we're here. I don't want to talk about it anymore. All right, what we wanted to do is before we go any further with it, I wanted to show you with all the stuff attached what it's doing before we tune it. This is what caused us no, no end of trouble over the last couple of yeah. weeks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some throttle to it. You see what it's doing is it's bumping and jumping around. And it's not even as bad as it had been. Yeah. We've mucked around with it a little bit off camera. So it was actually shaking, backfiring through the carburetor. Way, way too much advanced in it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show you exactly how to get that out of it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do to set timing is verify that the harmonic balancer is actually true on its TDC. Um, I've had that before, and it's real fun trying to set timing otherwise. So I'm going to take out cylinder one spark plug. Woo, that is rich. All right, I'm going to take a jumper wire from our starter solenoid to positive battery. I'm gonna stick my finger over the hole. I'm gonna wait for it to be blown off by a compression strip. Ow, I got zapped. <laughs> 12 volts, people. All right, compression just went through. Let's not do the zappy zap wire again. All right, we are coming up on compression still, I believe. All right, so compression felt like it was just going away. Yep. And right when it passed TDC on the harmonic balancer, my finger got sucked to the hole. So that is accurate. We are good to go. 
Man, you have to use a tuna snake. We'll thread this back into the hole. Hook the wires back up so we can crank it up and set base timing. All right, I'm going to go over what we're doing today. Now, we've already set the points on this engine. We set them uh, off camera. We've shown you how to set points before. You can go back and look at the URL for the video here. We have our dwell meter, which is basically a dwell tack meter. These are still available. You can get them online. Amazon carries them. There's a couple of different places out there that I should say carry them through Amazon. So you can get you a tack dwell meter. It's nice to have in your tuning kit if you're running points on your car. If you're running a Patronix, basically just buy yourself a cheap tack. That'll be the best thing to do for that. The other thing we have here on top of the engine is our vacuum gauge. Now on a big block 390 that doesn't have any kind of heavy duty cam in it with a lot of overlap, should be seeing vacuum signals somewhere between 15 and 20 inches of vacuum. That is not a never and always. It will be varying somewhat. And there we could do an entire video on what different vacuum signals mean. But just know that you want to have a good, steady, solid vacuum around 15 to 20 inches of vacuum at idle. The other thing we have is a tack. Now this is Cam's tack out of the Mustang. We're just robbing parts off cars now. We don't even care anymore. I can't find my testing tack. I know I got it here somewhere. I think it might be out in the Falcon, but I don't know where it is. So he just went ahead and brought this one today for us to use. I recommend buying yourself an inexpensive tack for doing this kind of stuff. And then finally, we have our inductive timing light. Now we're using one that has a dial set up on the back. Cam's going to go over that in just a little bit. But this timing light is just a normal xenon timing light that we got from Harbor Freight. Works fine for our purposes around here. Okay, so we've talked about the tools. Now I'm going to talk about what you do next in preparation for checking your mechanical advance. One of the first things I would want to do is go in and find out what my signal is coming off the carburetor. Now Holley's and a lot of the aftermarket carburetors have the ability to let you run ported or manifold vacuum. All you want to do is establish where you want to run that because that's going to allow you to adjust your uh, vacuum can on here for whatever that is. Uh, we're going to be running basically a manifold vacuum. That's the only way to do it on an Autolite carburetor. They have a port on the lower front side of the carb. That basically tells the engine what to do. There's your part of your brain, if you will. So we've established that we've got about 15 inches of vacuum coming off the carburetor. We know we're using manifold vacuum, basically. So we're going to now then go in and take and unplug the can from the hose here. I'm going to pull this up and through there. And I'm going to take and put something down inside of here to plug off your manifold vacuum signal from the vacuum can. You're basically trying to find out what your mechanical advance on your distributor is. So you don't want any kind of vacuum signal on that can at all. I'm going to set that aside. And Cam is going to come in here and show you how to check out the mechanical advance, find out exactly where you're at with your distributor. All right, so we've got the engine running up the temperature. A um, little bit out of order, but first thing you should do after you set TDC and make sure that the harmonic balancer is right is set your points. Uh, our points are already good. They're running perfect. Dwell's good on them. So we went ahead and just went ahead and got it running. Uh, we have set it to 12 degrees of base timing with timing light. Uh, you just put the inductive pickup on cylinder one, power ground, get it to idle, then shoot your light down at the harmonic balancer and the timing strip. We're right at 12 degrees of timing. All right, next thing up, we are going to check for mechanical advance. Uh, the way you do that is raise the RPM to about 3,000, which is why I have the tack out of my Mustang sitting here. And that will measure the spring rate, basically, that's inside the distributor. So you're going to have to get Jeff in here in a minute to raise it up, up because I can't do three things at once. All right, Cam, let's kick this pig. Wait, do you have a tack in there? There you go. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh, my God, it's so hot. He's going to raise it to 3,000 RPM, and you're going to see the timing move to around 30-ish degrees based on the spring rates that are already in the distributor. Ready? Go yep, go ahead and pick it up.
All right, so our timing light has this little dial on the back of it. What that is, it delays the flash of the light. So when you're running at high RPM, you can turn this in, and as soon as you see the top dead center line up with your timing strip, that's what your timing is. So we were right at 32 to 34 degrees of timing. That's purely mechanical. So next up, we gotta figure out how much advance our vacuum system is going in at about 15 inches of vacuum. It's hot in here. Shut this thing off. <laughs> like that's gonna make a difference. <laughs> Makes me feel better though. It's called heat soak. All right, so we have our base timing figured out and set to 12 degrees. Uh, we've got our entire mechanical advance figured out. We're running right at about 34 degrees at 3000 RPM, which is pretty strong. 390 calls for around 40-ish degrees, depending on what sources you go to. So next up, we're going to test our vacuum advance. Uh, we know this is already really hot from some stuff we did off camera already. It's running about 44 degrees at idle of timing with the vacuum line hooked up. Uh, I'll show you how to figure that out real quick, but we're definitely gonna have to adjust the vacuum can because it is throwing almost 30, yeah, 32 degrees of timing at idle into it. So we're looking at about 10 degrees total timing advance. So we are gonna have to adjust it for sure. So let me get this thing started back up and I'll show you how to figure out how much your advance is actually advancing. All right, so right now we are at idle. My timing gauge is at zero degrees. So to verify, we are back at 12 degrees on the harmonic balancer. So I'm gonna try to do this without burning or getting my fingers smacked by the fan. Disconnect our vacuum line. And as you can hear, sound of the engine changes drastically. Now if you look at the timing light, we're already off the strip for timing measurement. So I'm going to use our timing light and line up top dead center. And it just disappeared. And we are right at 42 or 44 degrees with just vacuum to that port. So it is adding 30 plus degrees of vacuum to this engine. And the way we fix that is with one of these. This little 1 8 hex head that we actually put inside the vacuum port. Now there's too much stuff to do this while it's running, so I'm gonna unplug this and you'll hear the engine drop back down like it's supposed to sound like. I'm gonna shut it off and I'm gonna pull a lot out of that can. All right, so you take your little driver, stick it in there, and you'll feel it slide into the hex head that's in there. I'm gonna pull four turns out of it. Um, you can go figure out which way is... Tightening the screw inside of this adds timing. Going counterclockwise removes timing. Uh, you can go all the way in, all the way out, and then figure out how many turns is to the middle and leave it there to start, but from the factory, well, this is a new vacuum advance can. Uh, it came to us about a quarter turn away from all the way in. So, I'm gonna go four turns out, actually, because I'm blind. I'm going to mark the top of my tool so I know how many turns I go. That is one turn. Two turns, three turns, and four turns. So, gonna put that back on, start it back up. And recheck timing. That's better. We are right at 
22, 24 degrees. I'm gonna pick some RPM up. It likes it. <laughs> now, what I wanna see. Got a little bit of spark knock. I think that's what I'm hearing. And also our timing staying a little bit high. We're now at about 26 or 28 degrees, somewhere in there. So I think I'm gonna pull one or two more spins out of it. Go from there. All right, so that pulled out. We're right at about 18 degrees of base timing right now. I'm gonna run this up to about 2,500. Oh yeah, she's gonna be happy. All right, uh, I will need Jeff to get in here so I can muck with it, but that's adjusted to about where it should be. Uh, once Jeff gets in here, I can see total timing with vacuum advance and mechanical advance in it. So, back in a flash. Jeff. All right, got Jeff in the truck. He's gonna pick it up to about 3,000 RPM. And I'm gonna mess with the timing deal and see how much total timing we have. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we can shut it off in. Yep. All right, so we are perfectly at 40 degrees at 3,000 RPM, which is right where it's supposed to be, and it sounds happy. I want to put the front end back on so we can drive it now. Well, I'm going to burn out a little bit now. Put a windshield in. <laughs> no, that's where it goggles. And I got all this other work. I'm just getting tired thinking about it. I want to get out and we can talk about this. <laughs> that sticker's right. Caution, hot. Yeah. So it's, it's actually is <laughs> hot. Hot. Yeah. Non cajita. I don't know. Anyway. anyway. Google Translate. <laughs> Google Translate. What does this mean? It's hot. <laughs> um. Hey. So, I'm happy. For yeah. once, in the last few weeks, something went right. It went right without us almost, having to. Almost perfectly. The only problem we had was we had to buy a battery. Yeah. So it cost us something. Maybe that's what we needed. We just spent tremendous amounts of money on something. <laughs> and then, yeah. Bada bing, it works. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're good. I mean, the only thing left to do now would be to take it out, test drive it, see how it handles hills, mm -hmm. things like that. If we get some ping and you just back a little bit of timing off yeah. on the distributor till that ceases. Um, you could probably even also go in and muck with that in the can or also... Yeah, you could pull a little bit of can out of it, out of it because it's adding up high. It's adding, I think, six or seven degrees, somewhere in there. But... <laughs> So it was all the way advanced because we were yeah. we were estimating 70 degrees. It, it had more timing at idle than it does now. But that's, that's what makes it act like it's got a fuel delivery problem too. When yeah. that vacuum can well, is hooked up. As soon as you give it air. It, yeah. Yeah. As soon as you give it air. It... So it just kind of, because I mean it was, it was running before like it had a, it had a carburetor problem. Yeah. I'm running great now. I'm, I'm Like I said, I'm anxious to get the nose on this thing and. I think it's going to run. Take it for a drive. Well, I mean, that's, that's what I wanted to show today, too, is what do you need to do? You know, immediately when you have a brand new vacuum can, look at that. Yeah. Always look at that first. because That would be a good be, idea just to go in and adjust it to the midway point to begin with. Just to be sure. Yeah. And even then, you're probably going to have to back it off yeah. just a little bit. You know, well, every, everything's going to be fit and fiddle. And it's, it's fit and fiddle even from here. Yeah. I mean, we're still not done with it because we obviously, because we don't have the brake lights finished up on the truck <clears throat> yet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we've got to finish that up, and then we got to get the mm -hmm. nose on the truck. We're going to do an episode on mm -hmm. here on this, Auto Rest. This is static tuning. This yeah, that's all we're tuning. doing right now. Is we're just trying to get it static tuned so yeah. that we're happy with it. I mean, everything here. is going to change when you load the engine. Power valve opening changes AFR. AFR affects when you what spark advance you need. So every yeah, and we could probably we know we could do on this one is we could do a, a tuning episode where we're looking at plug, you know, taking it out, yeah. running it. Because this one's easier to change. Yeah, um, jets on. Jets, jets on this one is a no-brainer. Yeah. 
compared to a holly. Holly's, yeah, because, <laughs> man, I used to have a Percy's block where you could change the jets out from the front of it. Mm -hmm. So easy. So, so easy. That's one thing I like about an Edelbrock, too. You can do it the same way as that. Yeah, you can just get to them real easy. They pop mm -hmm. in, pop out. I mean, you're still going to bar fuel, but... All right, well, folks, that's our show for this week. Be sure to come back and watch us next time on Auto Rest of Mod. Mod. You guys have a great week. Finally, success! Huzzah! Oh,